So I finally am getting a little bit more moved in in my new place and so I thought this would be a good time to make a video. Um, I apologize for the mess. I haven't completely finished <laughs> moving in yet. So today I wanted to talk about something that I think is just fascinating and that is Johann Kepler. Is that how you say that? Johannes? I know how to spell it. Anyway, Kepler. <laughs> was an observational astronomer back in the 17th century, which was a super exciting time in astronomy. You've got Galileo, you've got Tycho Brahe, the Copernicus model is just kind of taking hold. In fact, one of Kepler's first major works was a defense of the Copernican model. And so there was just a lot going on and it was super exciting. In fact, if I could go back, maybe bringing with like modern sanitation and maybe if I was a dude, but anyway, it would be a really interesting time to be an astronomer. So Kepler actually works with Tycho Brahe and uses Tycho's data observing the orbit of Mars to kind of match it up with models that they have. And he finds really close. He gets really close, but there's a couple of inconsistencies. And instead of being like, well, our data is bad or this model is pretty good. I think we know what's going on. Kepler's like, no, 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 I'm gonna figure out, I'm gonna come up with a better model or a better um, system of describing these orbits that actually matches what's going on. He does that and he comes up with this hypothesis that there's actually something in the planets that makes them move and in fact that there's even a motive force in the sun that makes all the planets move around it and that it varies inversely with distance. So he was kind of on the right track for sure and he couldn't postulate the why of what was happening but his detailed empirical observations like the groundwork for Newton to come along and I want to say 1680s? Sometime, <laughs> I should have researched this. <laughs> Kepler didn't quite make it all the way to gravity, but he came up with these laws of planetary motion, which were a big contribution to the field. And he was basically, I think of him as an astrophysicist before astrophysics was like a field and thing. So I love the whole beauty and simplicity of the motion of the planets and orbits. In fact, I'm reading this book right now for a little light reading, because I'm a nerd called Adventures in Celestial Mechanics, which is actually super interesting and I recommend it. I'm only a couple chapters in. It's not something you're gonna necessarily get through in one night, <laughs> but it's interesting. Um, so that's one of the reasons that I am so drawn to these um, laws. So what are his three laws? Okay, Kepler's first law is that the planets moved in elliptical orbits with the sun at one focus. So now that it's been a few more centuries and we've had Newton and everything, we know that this is just slightly inaccurate. Uh, it's not actually the sun that's at the focus, it's the center of mass of the sun-planet system. But since the sun is so massive, it just makes it look like it's the sun at the center. So Kepler wouldn't have been able to see that in his observational data. So I can run, so let's run through the math real quick, sorry, <laughs> uh, just to see what this effect would be. So basically, the mass of the sun is 333,000 approximately times the mass of the earth. And the average distance between the earth and the sun is 92.96 million miles. So if you run through the math on that, you'll find that the center of mass of the system is 279 miles from the center of the sun. For comparison's sake, the radius of the sun is 432,228 miles. So pretty small effect, you're not gonna see that. But in general, that is true to how the planets move. The second law, Kepler's second law, is that planets sweep out an equal area during equal time intervals. So what do we mean when we say sweep out an area? So what we're talking about is if there's an imaginary line that goes between the sun and the planet, and as the planet moves along its elliptical arc, that line is sweeping out an area. So it's defining this little pie piece. And during the same time intervals, those little pie pieces anywhere along the orbit are gonna be the same size. And what that means is that as the planet gets closer um, to the center, it's going to speed up. And as, as it gets farther away, it's gonna slow down. And Kepler's third law, Kepler's third law is that the square of the planet's orbital period, so how long it takes it to go around once, is proportional to the cube of the orbit's semi-major axis, which is the long axis. So, elliptic, so an ellipse is divided by two axes, the long and the short, and the long one is one he's talking about here. So if we say proportional, that's usually in uh, physics, that's usually a clue that there's a constant lurking around there somewhere. So Kepler came up with a constant and he found that it was actually the same for all the planets. But now we know that that's pretty close again, but this is affected by the lopsidedness of the masses involved because it's actually based on the sum of the sun and the planet involved. But since the sun is so big, you're really not gonna see that. So he thought that it was the same concept for all the planets. Nowadays we know that they're actually slightly different. 
So in a very quick nutshell, those are Coupler's Three Laws. I hope this maybe inspires you to find out more about them and dive deeper into it. Um, or maybe this was enough for you, but in any case, I hope you enjoyed it. I think that Kepler's laws are a beautiful testament to the power of observation, which is still a very important part of astronomy and astrophysics today. Um, so I hope you enjoyed it and hopefully I'll be back for another video soon. All right, bye. That is the three laws of Kepler. Da, 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 da. Just looking at shit and trying to figure out why it does that. <laughs> Oh my god, I just finished making banana bread and it smells so amazing in here and I have to control myself from eating the whole loaf right now.